Well, What's coach, uh, how do you how do you do you just flush a loss like that, <clears> or do you just kind of go back and really look and see what you could pull out? You know, it, it really tests what's inside of a man. Um, I can stand before him and I can rant and rave. The obvious, we didn't play well, all right. Um, or I can be be very poignant and pointing out the things of why we didn't play well, all right. Now that we understand why we didn't, how do we play better? And then go out in a correction period and uh, reenact those things, fix those things so they don't happen yet again to us in the upcoming week. Um, And then shore up uh, the style of offense, defense, and special teams that we need to play uh, to, uh, to tackle better. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's, you know, in the rigors and how volatile our sport is, you're limited to how many times you can really get it done in a practice week. And so a lot of it, it's on movable objects, but they're objects, not, not human beings. And so you, you then contemplate, do you have a period of live bodies? So you get used to it yet again um, to be readily prepared to, to uh, to fix those things when you when you miss thirty plus tackles, you 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 know we got to fix that. That cannot happen. You can't beat anybody uh, missing thirty plus tackles. And so uh, we'll do that. We'll be better because of it. It is not a uh, a button that a panic button that we're pressing at this time, um, because I think we have good players. I think we have guys that are in position to make the plays, and we got to coach them up to make that play. How was Frank uh, mentally <coughs> as far as after the game and then yesterday, you know, when y'all met and stuff? What, uh, how's he doing? You know? Very focused. Okay. Very, very driven, very focused. Uh, disappointed in himself. Uh, shared with him that uh, you don't need to carry the burden. You know, that burden falls on, on my shoulders. Uh, but he is very much wanting to be accountable and recognize the things that uh, he did not do well. We do not. We did not do well collectively, um, and so we'll we'll fix those things, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll be able to showcase that on on Saturday. Was he kind of tentative, coach, as far as <clears throat> not wanting to throw the pick? That he didn't air it out. I, you know, it's a cliche. I know, but to air it out that he was going boom, 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 and mm-hmm. like you say, you take what they give you. But uh, was there something deep? Maybe he hesitated sometimes to not go long because of or was the coverage that good or? Yeah, uh, I, I thought they played good coverage at times. I thought there were things that we could have taken advantage of uh, with at times as well. Uh, you know, a lot of what didn't go well, you got to attribute to to that team. It wasn't just us not doing it well. Um, yeah. They they played very well, and honestly. Because Army is such a different offense from what you'll face the rest of the year, do you hesitate to spend too much time going in all that versus kind of more general principles oh, well, for your team? Or do you right, really- we got to go get it. <laughs> we got to win this game. This uh, this game is a game that, uh, in our mind, we got to have. So is the next one, and then the next one, uh, and so to bypass uh, this team to get to the next opponent of a conference game is something that we are not in position to do. We cannot afford to do. Uh, we need to prepare uh, as best as possible to play this team. Again, we, we have some experience collectively as a staff uh, in playing it. It's been some, some time for me. Uh, ran it as a player, coached against it a time ago. Um, and so understand it, uh, but has, haven't played a game against it in, in quite some time. Ran it in college at, when I was a collegiate player at Nickel State. Um, and so what we'll need to do is uh, to lean on, on our defensive staff that, that have vast experience, expertise in, in playing against this style uh, of offense and prepare ourselves to play. Now the next part is preparing your players to play because getting cut front side, back side, like never before, it's what's gonna happen. And so to be able to beat that block with your hand, with your feet, to escape, to but yet keep your gap integrity is something that we'll have to practice throughout the duration of this week. How do your, from a personnel perspective, your defensive players match up against kind of a ground and pound offense? Because I know you have some, like at linebacker, <clears throat> some lighter guys, some converted teams. Yeah, they, they're not a massive team, Greg. Right? They, they, mm-hmm. They're not big in stature. Uh, I mean, they're starting left tackles, 235, 238. Huh. Uh, nice. Now, and he's that because you pitch off the end. You read the end. And so he works to the second level to backers and to safeties. 
And so they rely on their athleticism, their speed, their toughness uh, to get them by, not necessarily a mauling um, offensive unit. So I think our defensive, to answer your question, I think our defensive line matches up with them uh, from a physical standpoint. The thing we'll have to do is match their intensity and their effort because that's where they stand out. Coach, I know that all offenses obviously break up rely on defensive breakdowns to, to gain yardage, but especially this offense, right? Because mm -hmm. it's so much of, of this yeah. that regardless of what stunt is, if you got a stunt yeah. call, guys got to know who's got the gap, who's yeah. got the well, quarterback, yeah. who's got the pitch. A successful play for them is three yards. Yeah. They'll take three, they'll take two, they'll take four, they'll take one, and then it breaks for 50. And they'll take one, and they'll take three, they'll take two, then they'll throw it for 50. <laughs> <laughs> so how would they do the Michigan? You know, look yeah. at the film of Michigan. Yeah. They lull you to sleep, like you said, right? Yeah, and, uh, you know, they run their full backslash. Till, but he's the first option, and so they're going to give it to him, and they create movement. Uh, they create movement. They have great angle blocks. They play with great pad level, and they create movement, and they, they take those yards. And then at time, the next time the quarterback will pull it, and he'll pull it again, then he'll give it. Uh, then he won't give it. He'll pull it and pitch it, you know, so – uh, three options every time the ball is snapped is what that offense is equipped to do. Frank, was there some over-pursuit on the defense against Baylor? It seemed like, especially kind of on the edge, it looked like yeah. and some of those plays they lost containment. Is that something you really got to focus on? Yeah, you know what? Um, I don't know necessarily if, if I would call it over-pursuit. I think um, it could be viewed that way when guys spin back or cut against a grain on them as over-pursuit. Uh, and so we, we have a tactic called shimmy near foot, where you keep your, keep the ball on your near foot, near shoulder as you close and engage and you have body control and you're not wildly just running out there that allows a guy to come back against the grain against you, that you always keep um, him condensed between the other defender, the sideline and your body so you don't give that up. And so again, technical things that we work on, we can work on, uh, to be sure tacklers. How did your offensive line and pass protection in general look when you want to look back at the film against Baylor? You know, on the field, I thought it, it was it was worse than what the film showed. Again, the very first one, um, it was a communication deal and uh, that turned uh, a, a defense alignment loose on a, on the tailback. Uh, after that, um, to be able to understand the protection, to be able to throw within the configurations, the confinement of the pocket, that at times when the quarterback aborts that, it appears as though, man, the offensive line is breaking down. And that's not necessarily the case. The, the protection isn't designed to protect the quarterback out there. And so, you you know, a lot of times the offensive line get, get, yeah. get the blame like, ah, oh, ain't blocking anybody. Well... That wasn't design of the protection. And then there's other times where guys came loose. So collectively, uh, we all, uh, the backfield, the offensive line, the receiving core, uh, we all had a share in not uh, having the success that we desired. Coach, I know you've never, I know you haven't coached against uh, one of the academies and stuff, but can you just yeah. speak to the, to the fact that you're going to be playing against a team that yeah. the players are yeah. the cream of the crop. You know, they don't cut you any slack in those academies. You play football. And you just put more on your plate. You don't get any special treatment and stuff. But what, uh, what's it like to go up just prepared to the kids that you know are yeah. disciplined? And you know, my mind just, uh, I, I think of the Roger Staubachs of the world and all of the, the, the prestige of the military academy, what they stand for, uh, how they stand uh, on the front line for our country to come to our city, military city, uh, USA. Uh, to with 24 young men from the state of Texas on their roster. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big deal. It's an honor to be able to play against that opponent uh, that does more than most uh, yeah. from sun up to sundown. And so uh, tremendous amount of respect uh, for all of the academies uh, and honor to play this football team and what those players endure in their everyday obligations and then the football added to it just speaks to the type of men that uh, we're going to have to compete against. You mentioned that the offensive line would grow as, as communication improves. Yeah. Have you seen that progress? From yeah. yeah, we have. We, we, we were better uh, in week two than we were in week one. Who, who of the running backs is the best in pass protection? Who can you lean on in that sense? <laughs> I think all of them are, are capable of doing it. 
Um, I think it's a combination, Greg. Sometimes you want a guy in there for protection. You want a guy sometimes that you want to throw the ball to. And then other times you want a guy that gives you the duality that can protect and catch it out of the backfield and still have the threat in the run game. And so you look for uh, the ideal uh, back to be able to do it. Uh, you know, the, back that, the backs that we've had in the past have been fortunate enough to move on because they've been every down backs. They haven't been just third down. Third down is important. Um, because it's the money down, it counts. It allows you to continue to drive. But they're all trained the same. We don't do one thing different from one than the other. Uh, I think they're probably equal in the things that they can do out of the backfield. Some have little uh, better ball skills than other, but from a protection standpoint, I feel confident in an entire unit. I know Army's pass rush definitely created some problems against Michigan. Is there something special about them up front that allowed them to have that success? Uh, they don't stay blocked. Yeah, that you can put a person on them and they could be blocked. They just don't stay blocked. That they're relentless and they continue to pursue the quarterback. Since Sarah McCormick is good, can he? Yeah, he can run. Yeah, he can run a little bit. It's good to see him get loose. Frank, how did the, the defensive backfield play? I mean, obviously there was a few big ones, yeah. but did, do you they know, grow from something like yeah, that? You know, they contested balls. Yeah. Uh, they knocked down balls. I think even the one that, that was caught on Cassius, he was in position, probably mistimed his jump a little bit, jumped a little early, and the guy elevated as he was coming down. Uh, then you had the, the back shoulder one, um, and we gave up a slant where it was more the safety than the corner. Uh, but there weren't – it wasn't an air assault where balls were just flying over our heads. There were balls that were caught, even the slant, that went the distance that we didn't tackle. But for the most part, I thought we kept the guys in front of us and guys weren't just running naked behind us, uh, buck wide open for, for touchdowns. Uh, they were contested passes and sometimes they got the better uh, than, than we did. The thing about defensive back play, if there were 18, 15 shots down the field, if they completed two, that's the two you remember. The, the, the 15 others don't matter. You gave up two big ones. And so the 15 that you contested, and that's the life of a defensive back. You got to have short-term memory, and people remember the ones that were caught on you, not the ones that you deflected or, or knocked down. Luke, Lucas seemed pretty uh, consistent with his yeah. playing. Yeah, he, uh, 40 plus, uh, gave us a chance, put air on it, put distance on it. Um, the one that was returned, we'd like it a little more outside the numbers, so the coverage unit that uh, that's called, the play that's called, can condense him into the sideline, not as much in the middle of the field. Um, but uh, he, he'll be a good one. Yeah, we, uh, we're very fortunate to have him. I mean, it's, it's going to probably be important in this game. I, it's, I imagine it's going to be a field position or field position game. Do you anticipate that style of ground and pound? Yeah. Uh, oh, they're going to run the ball. Yeah. <laughs> you better believe it. They're going to run the ball right at us. And uh, we'll have to be stout in the run game to be able to stop it. And they're, they're every intention. They're a pressure team. They're going to come after us uh, from a defensive standpoint uh, against our offense to try to stop the run as well as applying pressure on the quarterback. And so we'll game plan accordingly and, uh, and be prepared to go. Well, that second quarterback Baylor put in was not bad, huh? He's, he's one hell of a runner for sure. He runs the ball extremely well. Uh, broke several tackles. Uh, guys in position, and he did a good job. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Take, take care.